Hello everyone, it's Judy here. I never do my intro like that, I always say hey. Hey everyone, it's Judy here. 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 Hello feels weird. No, that's not me. Hey everyone, it's Judy here, and in today's video, we are visiting Lucy's absolutely gorgeous island, Rosebell. So Rosebell actually got its name because Lucy's favorite flowers are roses, and actually it looks like there's some presents here, so there's a ladder that might be useful, and also some little presents, so let's go ahead and see what's in these. Now, Lucy's Island is actually inspired by the Studio Ghibli movies and kind of just the wonderful magic that each of them portrays. She told me that with her island, she really tried to create a wonderful, mysterious, sleepy, magical oasis for her villagers, and already from the entrance here, you can tell that that's definitely being accomplished. I mean, just the sides of the resident services already look so magical. There's the statues here, but we'll get into that. Let's finish seeing what's in all these packages. So. The first dress is actually a sweet dress, and are those angel wings on the back of it? I didn't even know this was in the game. Look how cute this dress is. Also some flowery dot tights, a halo. Oh my goodness, this is such like a dreamland. Some flower sandals and a petal parasol for our outfit here. Look how cute this is, oh my goodness. Lucy said that she attempted to recreate the magical garden from Hal's moving castle and I definitely do get that sort of vibe from here, like it does look very very enchanted. She also added some different features around the island that we'll get into later, such as a doll cafe, which is actually inspired by Melanie Martinez. Rosebell is also divided into three major sections, namely the magical forest, gnome land, and candy land, so definitely going to be very fun to explore around this map today. But oh my goodness, can we just say how beautiful it is? Just just from the start. Just look at all these cliffs here. Look at the little waterfalls, the pathways, these tiles on the ground. Everything looks so pretty. And this is actually where the airport is. Okay, so here's what it looks like as you enter this magical, magical town. We can also go ahead and take a look at the villagers, because I just realized we haven't done that yet. Oh my goodness, Fleurbean! First villager, you know it's going to be a good town when Fleurbean's the first one there. We have Flurry, Stitches, Meringue, Marshall, Tia, Judy, Diana, Maple, Sky, and Blue Bear. So lots of very cute villagers. Alright, so let's get started, shall we? As we enter the town here, we can see the entrance, which looks so beautiful. If we look up, you can even see the terraforming with the cliffs there and the sculptures that have been used throughout the town, just really creating this effect of a magical art gallery almost. We can continue walking over here, and there's actually a little bench where you can sit in front of residence services. I think this is actually a really cool landscaping idea. I know there's some people that residence service is really, really close to your airport, but if it is a bit further back, you could create this really lovely looking waterfall feature in front of it, which I really do think adding lots of cliffs throughout the town makes it feel a lot larger too. So let's go ahead and head down this ramp and continue to the right here. I love how Lucy used the fairy path in this town too, and I actually saw some pictures on her Instagram of her town in winter. And it looks so good in contrast to the snow. It's like the entire town transforms into a magical winter wonderland. But then right now, when it's springtime, you can also see the cherry blossoms in the wind and it has a completely different vibe, but both of them are equally magically and beautiful. That was not proper English. Both of them are equally magical and beautiful. Something I really love to see in towns is when the villagers are actually given some more personality to their homes. And you can see here that Skye is actually an artist. Back here we have one of her sculptures, there's a painting. Over here it looks like she's working on this very very big painting and her paint set is actually still out so I guess it's still a work in progress but it's looking absolutely beautiful. And I just think it's really nice to see how cozy the house looks tucked back between the cliff here. If we continue to the front here we actually have the camping area. So you can see that there's the campsite, some surfboards next to it, 
I think over here you can actually get your wetsuit too if you'd like to go diving. I wonder if you catch a fish that you've never caught before while you're dreaming, does it still count for your encyclopedia? I wonder. This looks so cute over here with like all the different textures on the sand. There's some picked flowers, some patterns, and then there's also the little bonfire here. It just seems like such a nice place to relax. Then over here, oh my goodness, look how cute this is. Imagine just sitting out here on the cushions with all your friends and villagers, hanging out by the campfire, singing the campfire song. Just having a great time. Looks like back over here we have some more decorations. This is another really cute idea, is actually the book on that cushion there is a lost item. And it kind of looks like someone put their journal down. Just, it adds a little bit of life to the area. Alright, so let's actually go ahead and head back up here and across the bridge. And there's even some little benches where you're able to sit here. I really, really like how there's still a lot of natural elements in this town. Oh, it looks like down here we actually have the museum. And this area here is actually the fairy picnic and the restaurants. So you can see right here, there's a little tea party. We have a teddy bear also attending the party with us. Then there's some more little weeds on the ground. A Jacob's Ladder as well. And it looks like there's some other restaurants along the beach here. So you can see there's a little place you could have dinner here. A couple of places actually. This also looks like such a nice place to have dinner, you know? Just listening to the sounds of the ocean, enjoying the views. Look how pretty this is as well. I love the cherry blossom petals that have been used here. And this like white picnic rug, it just looks so elegant. And the fairy path also, it looks so good on the sand because it really has a good contrast with it. It just kind of adds a lot more color and vibrancy to the usually kind of plain sand. And like going back into the details too, there's even little flower petals under this chair here, you know? It's towns that have a lot of little things, you know, a lot of little details, like flowers under your chair, little weeds in the corner, or even little stalls with star fragments and glowing magical things. A bunch of small things put together is what makes such a big, beautiful thing. Like, even at the side here, we have little log stakes and flowers, you know? Like, no part of this is bland. Back here, we can actually see that there's cherry blossom tree right at the edge there. Another little patch of grass. And then back through here. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. So some of the zodiac furniture has actually been used to just create this very regal looking spot. There's even a wedding organ back here that you could play. So definitely a very fancy place to hang out. And this area here is actually the zodiac beach, which I think is a very fitting name for such a regal dreamy area. If we actually return to this strip of land here... Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, I did not mean to push you. If we actually go back to this strip of land here, and then go to the side, this building here is actually based off of Hal's Moving Castle, and it's called Hal's Ruins, so let's take a look inside. And each of the villager houses on this town do actually have different, like, meanings and stories behind them, so it's gonna be very fun to explore them. So as we enter here, you can definitely get a lot of those sort of mysterious vibes from the movie, which is so cool. I love all the clocks on the wall, the lanterns, and the lighting in this room is so atmospheric. Let's actually go ahead and see what the back room looks like. This is so cool too. There's a little stall here, the counter. I'm not quite sure how to describe it, but I, I feel the the atmosphere of the movie in here i think the recreation was done really well next let's go see the left room okay so here we actually have the bathroom this looks really cozy as well and you can actually see the showers there and it has clean water so pave would approve but yeah this definitely looks very cozy we have the little sink here 
Actually, wait a second. Is that wasting water? Oh no. Okay, save the planet. Looks like there's some spider webs. You know, most people during the bug off were obsessed with the bug cages and the termite mounds. And I'm just here like toy cockroaches and spider webs. But first of all, the toy cockroaches are adorable. And second of all, look how cozy the spider webs look. Like it's just another one of those little details that just really brings the room to life. And I love how the candles actually wave. Like you can see the flame moving in New Horizons. This game is just so beautiful. So next, let's go check out the right room. Is that incense burning too? Or does it have steam coming from it? It does, do you see that? It has a little steam. Oh, that's so cool. My, my point proven. This is an amazing game. Okay, let's go check the right room. Oh, this is cool. This is like much more of that sort of like enchanted magical element. So you can see there's the cauldron back there. There's a little spell area, like a fortune telling kit. And also the little circle on the ground. So this is kind of like much more of that like sort of enchantedness place. Yes, yes. Very, very nice. I love all the candles around here too. It just really, really nails that like mysterious sort of atmosphere. It looks really good. And this wallpaper is really cool too with like the mossy bricks. It looks so nice. All right, next let's go see upstairs. Oh my goodness. So this is the bedroom. But again, just, just admire the lighting for a second here. Look at that lighting. It looks like the left side is a bit more blue and the right side's a bit more red and purple. It just looks so nice though. There's a glow back there. You can see lots and lots of clutter, the books everywhere. On the other side here, same kind of thing with the tables and just everything's so cozy. And you can actually still go ahead and lay down on the bed here. See all the paintings on the wall? And again with that sort of mossy cobblestone wallpaper, which really does remind you of being in the castle, so that's really cool. Overall, it's a very very good recreation. Even the exterior has that sort of old castle vibe to it, which is so cool. And if we actually just walk in front, this isn't even part of the path, but even off the path, there's all these really detailed, adorable areas. I love the little star fragments that are also scattered around the town, making it feel even more magical. Stonehenge just kind of chilling here, and a little bench to sit back there, like just all these things that make it have such a nice atmosphere to it. I, I'm going to say atmosphere a lot during this town probably because it's the best way I can describe it. It's just everything is gorgeous and amazing and it feels really nice to be here. And the way that I describe that feeling is atmosphere. Even there, you see that little wishing well? It's kind of hiding between the bamboo. I, I see those little details and I think they're beautiful. Now if we actually go ahead and continue walking down this path here, we will end up in Candyland. It looks like there's actually a little flower shop here. So that's really cute too. I love the sign and the little stalls there. Let's actually see which villager is it that's doing the gardening for the town. It's Blue Bear. That's so cute. I think Blue Bear's actually, yeah, she's standing right there. That's so cute. Okay, so, oh my goodness, there's even a little cup. Oh my goodness, we're entering Candyland and there's cupcakes on the ground. Wait, that's so cute. Oh my goodness. And it looks like this is the Candyland main house. So let's just take a look outside first. Looks like there's a little place to sit here. Some sweets on the ground. Oh my goodness, back here, it's like an amusement area. It is Stitch's house at the back. I thought so. So he actually has kind of more of that carnival theme around his house, which is definitely very fitting for Candyland. There's a soft surf light back there. Looks like there's also a little stall where you can buy some stuff in front of it. So that's really cool. Maybe you can buy some extra candies. So let's go see what it looks like inside the house here. The lighting. I feel like that's going to be a common theme throughout these houses because Lucy is just so amazing at working with the lighting in New Horizons. Okay, so it looks like you check in here. And if we actually go ahead and walk around and enter the store, looks like there's some toys, a little place to sit, kind of like a little mini cafe. Oh, I love that. Okay, let's go see the back room. So here we have the kitchen. So there's a little kitchen island here. We have the cake, the dolly, some kitchen, um, what are those called? System kitchens, I believe. 
the ones with like the sink and cabinet so this is the basically this is the candyland kitchen so this is where the magic happens really everything of course looks very very cute here and yeah we're kind of getting a behind the scenes exclusive look at how the candy is made so that's pretty cool all right so next let's actually go into the left room oh my goodness there's a birthday party here this is adorable so it looks like there's a little party table, we have the cake in the center, the happy birthday sign, some presents. This is so precious. I would personally love to have a birthday here. I feel like this is the type of place where, you know like those really really cool like cotton candy tacos and stuff, like the viral Instagram sweets? I feel like you'd be able to order that here. And I feel like that would be a really cool thing to get on your birthday. There's even another cake there. What if you could have a puppy birthday? Like the cake on the ground is for the doggos and they're having a party too? <gasps> yes, oh my goodness, I would so take my doggo here. I love places that do that. You get some places that are actually like restaurants for your pets and I love them so much. Like I am here for them. I think they are amazing. Like dog bakeries and stuff, love those so much. This room actually reminds me of a cat cafe. So maybe the mom's plushies are like cats and you get to sit here and like hang out with the cats while you're having your coffee. And I also feel that because on the back wall there, there's all the cat posters. But then there's also Cookie and Flurry there, so maybe that's just a coincidence. But either way, it does look like some sort of animal cafe, which actually no, there's cat towers. It must be a cat cafe. Cannot speak a cat cafe which again here for I think that's adorable and there was actually um this one cat cafe where all the cats in the cafe would be shelter animals and so you could go to the cafe and you could interact with the cats and if you like them you could adopt them which I think that's a really cool idea to also help more animals find homes okay and then next let's go upstairs looks like there's a bedroom up here this again looks so adorable. We have the two beds on either side. We have some little springy ride-ons, the dollies there, the bookcase. Just everything is so, 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 so cute. And again with the lighting. Oh, and look at the little mobiles hanging on the ceiling. It looks like the dolls are actually getting like a magic show by the gnome, which is really cool too. I guess that they have some entertainment options at Candyland too. Something I'd actually like to see in a future update is ceiling items. Oh my goodness, are you okay? Uh, alright then. As I was saying, something I'd like to see in a future update would actually be the... Ceiling items. So if, I don't know, if you played Happy Home Designer, but basically you could hang like chandeliers and ivy from the ceiling. And I would love to see that make a return in New Horizons. Back here, we actually have a teddy bear tea party, so this is really cute. It's just really adorable, especially with all the waterfalls around it. Oh, and even those like giant rainbow Christmas trees back there too, those are so pretty as well. If we actually take out our ladder and climb up the cliffs a bit, there is actually a waterfall garden back here. So let's actually see if we can go find that. Look how beautiful this is. Oh my goodness, so there's a little picnic area here so you could just pack a lunch and have a picnic here for the day. And you can even lie down here. Wow. Just, just wow really. I mean, I, I pretty much am required to take a picture here, so we'll do that really quick, but oh my goodness. I have goosebumps. I have actual goosebumps from how beautiful this is. Okay, if we head back down this ramp here, there's even some little bees here. That's always good to see. Always good to see bees having homes. And I think if we actually continue back through here, past the little bee farm, we have the secret beach where this also just looks very enchanted. You can see you can sit on the moon. Then there's the nova lights at the sides. This is a little fishing spot too with the rocking chair and the fishing rod. That's so cute. And I love also how the bee houses aren't all in line, you know? They're kind of like spread between the cliffs. Which, I don't know, I just feel like that, that gives it like a very nice 
very nice look. And it looks like the shopping district might be right down here. So we do have Nook's Cranny. And then if we head back up the path, we also have the Able Sisters. The little sewing kit outside. That looks so, so lovely. Then we can continue back through here. Just look at this. Look at this. All the paths merging together with the forest around it. So incredibly beautiful. Now if we actually go ahead and head up this- Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, I did not mean to push you, Marshall. If we head up this ramp, here we actually have the library. And you can see there's even a little spot to rent books in front of it, so that's really cool. If you don't have time to quite walk in and look at everything, you can also grab a little rental from outside. And there's another one over here too, so definitely encouraging all the villagers to read lots of stories. But let's go see what it looks like inside. Oh my goodness, it's so cozy! So it looks like you can check in, maybe return or get a book from the counter here. And if we head inside, we can see there's lots and lots of different stories you can get, even a little fireplace so you could sit there and read a book. I feel like that would be especially nice in winter or autumn, and autumn is actually coming up! Happy September, everyone! I hope that you have a really good month! But yeah, here we do have some more of the bookshelves, some of the stories. Just so cozy and beautiful. Now back outside, I am going to point out that the terraforming is beautiful. If I take out the camera and kind of like scroll down, look at all the little like rivers and streams behind the house down there. That looks so good. So let's actually head across the bridge. There's another small library here. And this is actually the main house. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like there. Wow. Just wow. So you can actually sit on the little mum cushion as you're walking in. But look at this. Look at all the plants back there. The bookshelves. A little place to sit and watch TV. So kind of like a living room. So there's a desk here. This is such a pretty main room. Okay, let's go check out the right side. Oh, no way. So we can see that really nice dreamy pink aesthetic has actually been mixed together with this sort of foresty look, just creating this really nice kind of fairy core overgrown bedroom. This is beautiful. I love the butterflies on the walls too. That's actually a wallpaper from the bug off. All the paintings on the back wall. Wow. Okay, let's go. Let's continue making our way through here. This town and these houses are so gorgeous. Oh, upstairs is actually the mermaid stuff. So you can see there's the mermaid chairs over here. Again, love the star fragments kind of scattered around the floor. Really just emphasizing that magical effect of the island. Looks like there's a vanity where you can get changed and do your makeup. And I love all the mermaid dresses on the wall too and the bubbly wallpaper. This is just so beautiful. Alright, let's actually go ahead and see what it looks like downstairs. So that is a beautiful house and it looks like it's up against the ocean. But if you look down, you can actually see there is some more land behind here. Oh my goodness, look at the little ducks. <gasps> They're so cute. They're all just kind of sitting on the island here. Can we just take a second to look at the terraforming in front of the house too? Like this is crazy. Okay, so let's actually head back down in front of the library and explore some of the other areas on the island. Oh my goodness, there's like a fairy circle here. This is so pretty. I love how the Jacob's Ladders and the rocks have been moved around the statue. That must have been so hard to move too, but it looks amazing between all the trees and mush lamps as well. I love how even amongst the cliffs there's like butterfly models and ducks and just all this life in the town. And back here, we even have a little wheelbarrow that somebody was pushing before. So let's see, if we cross over this bridge, we have some more little villager houses, 
a little place to sit right on the edge of the cliff there. Then if we head down this ramp, we can see that there's this little path that actually leads all the way to the front beach. So this is actually Gnome Beach, and right here is the Gnome House. So you can see there's a little gnome that's busy going fishing, all of this decks and weeds and patterns lining the beach, and it definitely does have that sort of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, you know, like magical fairy tale element to it. Oh my goodness, inside the house is so cute! Oh, look at the little gnomes just living their best life. Like they're actually sitting by the fire reading a book. This gnome is kind of like observing the moss ball. They have a pet hamster too, that's pretty cute. And they're washing their hands, which is definitely very important. Stay safe, everybody. But wow, this is so cozy, so adorable. Also, I just noticed, like, do you see how the paintings and stuff? They're kind of closer to the ground because the gnomes are a bit shorter. See, even the telephone has like a little cushion so you could like stand on the cushion if you couldn't reach the phone. That's so cute too. This is adorable. Oh my goodness. Next, let's actually head back onto land here. We can see there's a couple more gnomes. They're chatting under the mushroom. They're filling up some buckets. What do we have back here? Oh, they're actually selling some fruits. I will buy one peach, please. Thank you. So if we actually continue up here, looks like there's some clothesline poles. And there are the gnomes actually busy hanging up the laundry. Oh my goodness, the detail. That is so cute. I have never seen um, the laundry, like the clotheslines, with like a tanuki or some sculpture in front of it making it look like someone's using it. I think that is adorable. It looks like they wash their clothes in the well. That's also adorable. If we actually squeeze through here, we can see an extension of Gnome Beach. So there's some more gnomes busy doing their laundry. So adorable, oh my goodness. And they're actually chatting while they're busy crafting. Look how cute that is too. I love that. It's like the gnomes have their own little life here. And then through here we have, I believe this is Judy's house. And then we can continue to this side. We have the little wishing well. Another villager house back here. And if we cross over the bridge, we do have a little garden bench some more of the beautiful landscaping. I think we can hop over the stream. It looks like there's actually a wedding venue on the beach here. That's so cute. So we can walk through this little shell arch and you can see there's the ring. We have some benches as you walk down the aisle. I love the orchestra behind it too. And the moon as well. It kind of looks like the moon is rising over the wedding. Like you're having your wedding during a super moon. <laughs> Imagine how romantic that would be, having a wedding on the beach during a supermoon. So now we can actually see that area behind the house that we noticed earlier. It's kind of like this little pathway, and I think there's actually a little writing area back here. So you can see back here is where you can sit down and write lots of stories, like a little spot for an author to work on their latest novel. How could you not be inspired with scenery that's this beautiful around you? I feel like the stories that they write here are all going to be so amazing. It looks like they do have their mailbox there too, so that's really cool. Now this town has been absolutely stunning. We do actually have one final place to visit here, so let's go see if we can make our way down there. And here we are, so you might not even be able to notice it, you might just think, hey this island has a really cool shape, but if you pay attention to it, this entire island is actually shaped like a moon, and if we go ahead and take a look at the map here, you can see we're in the center of this adorable little moon pond. And if we actually hop over here, we can see that there's some little ducks here, a reading area. I just, I love the different flowers that are mixed together with the patterns and stuff. It just makes it seem so natural and elegant and beautiful and amazing in every way possible. And yeah, that is actually all of the areas of Rosebell for us to explore today. So this has been a real dream. It was so gorgeous. So much fun getting to explore it. 
I will go ahead and open up the map one more time just so you can see how beautiful the terraforming of the town is as well. Now something that's actually really cool about this map is if you look at the bottom of the screen, the dream address is 3328-3405-6427 and I will also put that in the description of the video if you'd like to check out the island as well as a link to Lucy's Instagram page so you can continue to follow her to get all the updates on the progress of Rosebell. But yeah, I really do hope that you enjoyed the video. So thank you so much, Lucy, for allowing us to come visit your beautiful island today. If you have a five-star island that you think would be fun to tour in a future video, feel free to let me know. I do have a link for island tour applications in the description of this video, so feel free to just fill out that form and I will get back to you soon. That being said, I'm going to say it again, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you're able to get some inspiration for your own island, and thank you so, so much for watching. Bye everyone!